Hey everybody, it is Caleb here. I realized I have to take a small detour from my DMX in Unreal course because I'm giving you guys solutions to using DMX in Unreal Engine, but I haven't given you guys any solution to actually providing the DMX stream. Um, so what I'm gonna do in this video is show you guys how to make an easy, uh, very cheap lighting console using Dot2 on PC. Dot2 is a lighting console that Grand MA made for a very short time, or that MA Lighting made for a short time. And it runs similar to Grandma2, even though it can't take those sh kind of show files. Um, it's not as clean as Grandma2 or Grandma3, but it still does quite a bit of things. So it's definitely a lighting controller that could run your Unreal shows up to one universe for free. And then I'm going to be controlling it with a stream deck. So if you could see here, my path is I'm using companion and then the notes go into, well, not notes, but the stream deck talks to Granime, which then spits out a MIDI note through the command line. The note in the command line gets passed through Bone MIDI translator and then into dot two on PC, which then acts as your lighting controller. So then each button is mapped to a different executor. So let's get started. And if you like what you see here and want to see more videos just like this, including Unreal Engine programming, Touch Designer, Grand MA, MA3, Blender, and more, give this channel a subscribe and a thumbs up because it really helps the channel and I out. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start off in Companion. And I wanna start by saying this. If you're running Companion, make sure you close Stream Deck first. I mean, this Stream Deck. If you have this up and running when you're trying to run Stream or uh, Companion at the same time, they're gonna argue. So you should get your Stream Deck to the default dark Stream Deck logo and then run companion. And just make sure it's plugged in by USB. And then we're gonna launch the GUI in a browser <clears throat> and get set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is run Grand MA as well. So go ahead and start your file. Ignore these MIDI notes because um, it's just from the last recording. What we have to do first is set up an IP address for our companion and Grand MA to talk down. So let's go to control panel, and then we can go to network and internet, sharing center, adapter settings, and then make sure that you have an ethernet that is plugged into something, whether it's a network switch or your router. I This is a spare ethernet plug that's on my monitor and I plugged it into my router just to make it active. And then you're gonna go to the properties of it and assuming that this is not your main ethernet, you're getting your internet down, you can go to properties, hit obtain or uh, use the following IP address. You have to click on that and then give it an IP address. Now your IP addresses that Artnet can run down are limited to the 2.0 range and the 10.0 range. Um, when you're talking to just Grand MA, so if you just want to output MIDI, you can use a 192.168 range. But for outputting ArtNet and using it as a lighting console, you need to do a two range. So I'm gonna do 2011. And then subnet mask, just click on that at Linux fill and then press okay. Now we can close out of our ethernet settings and then start a connection in Companion. So let's type MA Lighting to get our Grand MA2. Add that, and then we need to type in our IP address. I'm sorry. And then this we need to set in Grand MA. So I'm gonna do that right now. 
Let's bring up Grand MA. And then under setup, you need to go to global settings first and enable Telnet. Telnet is what allows your companion to talk to Grand MA. And then you also need to go to MA network control and then navigate to this station IP that you set in your network preferences. If you don't have it in here, then you're going to need to, not that. If you don't have it in there, then you're going to need to restart Grand MA. And then that will get it to list all of the IP addresses that are running. And then you can change it and then restart again. So get to this IP address and then create a session. Then the last thing you need to do, the third thing is in user and profile setup, make a user for yourself. So press add user. And then my password is just admin. And then log in on that user. And it should show on this tab your username once you're logged in. All three of those things are needed. And now we should be able to talk to our Grand MA with Companion. <clears throat> so let's give it our username. And then once we hit save, it should connect. Once you see OK here, you're good to go. Now let's go to buttons and make our buttons. We're going to click on our first buttons and then hit regular. And I'm going to give this a name. <clears throat> and then under press actions, we have to browse to Grandma 2. And we're going to do run command. Our command is going to be MIDI note, uh, not like that. And if you want to find more documentation on these MIDI notes, you can go to, I'll delete this. You can go to the help window and then type in MIDI. And then it will bring up this MIDI note keyword. And this is going to be your guide for entering your MIDI commands. So we would have to specify our MIDI channel if we were using a MIDI channel other than one. But because it's one, it defaults to MIDI channel one. So all we have to type in is MIDI note, our note number, not in brackets, and then our velocity number, not in brackets, not separated by any period or colon. So let's add that in. MIDI note zero for our first MIDI note and 127 for the maximum velocity of a MIDI note. We're then gonna hit Control C and under release action, we're gonna add the same thing, except it's gonna say zero. Um, it automatically takes to it so we don't have to save. So let's go to Grandma 2 and test this. There we go. We can see our notes coming in. Now we need somewhere to point that MIDI note. So for this, I'm gonna use loop B. You can also use BOM if you want, <clears throat> but BOM would be used very basically here. So for the this video, I'm gonna use loop B. Once you see it in your system tray, it's running. And what loop B does is lets me output. So click on this yellow dot to configure your MIDI options and then go to MIDI. What this does is it lets me output MIDI to Loop B and then pick it up in another program through the MIDI in device. Now on this one, you wanna make sure that your MIDI from on PC is turned off and then your MIDI in device is none. MIDI out device is Loop B. And now these notes should be being broadcast to Loop B. Now they just have to be picked up in dot two. So let's run dot two. Now we're ready to set up our dot to show file. First thing we need to do is go to tools and receive our MIDI. So let's click on MIDI configuration. And then when you start, this is going to be checked out. It's going to look like this. 
So you're going to want to click on these three dots and then click on loop B internal MIDI. Once you do that, hit escape and then you can go to setup and set up your remote inputs for your MIDI. So click on the MIDI tab because you might be on analog or DMX and then drag over these first like 20. I don't know how many buttons you have on your stream deck and you're going to change them to exec by right clicking. Then page is going to probably leave that on current and then on exec, all you have to do is drag over these and hit please and it'll auto range them from one incrementally. Your button is going to be left on button one. Now, if you want to change it to fader, you can, but if you wanna have on and off fade times, it has to remain on button. Here's how you set these up. Let me patch some dimmers real quick so we can see what we're working with. And then I will turn them all on and store that to a button. So we can test this button. Now, if I hit this, this should at least go. And it did. So you can see that we have communication from the Stream Deck through GranMA, through Loopy to dot two. Now we need to set up our buttons to behave as such. So what I found is you can go to Companion, and if you want some of these buttons to latch or toggle, you just click this button. So I'm gonna set this top row up to latch and toggle. And then go to dot two. So now I want to store, I want to turn these three lights on with this button. Three, three lights this button and that will be good for my first set of four <clears throat> my next playback will fall right here where I want well you know what I want all of these to flash then let's make this a little more dramatic left side right side and then this is flash all and then I'll make flash bottom row so these two have to be toggle these two have to be flash so we've already set that up in companion what we need to do is hit edit and then this playback and then hit this little wrench now we can tell it that button one, which is this one, is temp. The difference between temp and flash is that temp follows fade time. So now we can give it an off time of say one second and then give it a fade time of one second. And then you'll notice that if you push your button, it still doesn't go you need to set the fader value to where you want it to be. So if you bring it all the way up, it'll go and then you turn it off and now you have control of it. If you want it to be at 50%, you just have to bring your fader down to that level and then it'll only turn on to 50%. So let's set that up with this button as well. I'll do half a second fade on this one. And then for some reason this one's not turning off. Oh, I need to set this to temp. There we go. So now these two toggle and I need to set these up to flash. Well, I believe they're already flashing. Uh, no, they're not. 
edit temp and then temp again and they should follow the same behavior as the other buttons except that I still need to turn the faders up to their desired intensity so there you have it that should cover I'm trying to think of anything else let's set up a go a Q stack button um, and I'll do that on my bottom rows so that's probably just gonna be a standard config as well something like this except that it's linked to the go button so let's store another queue where all of these twinkle um where was i i always have a bit of trouble navigating dot two but they're all twinkling so i'm going to store that to right here now this should turn on if i push this button and then i set my intensity and now i want to go to a second queue where this group turns off And then after that, make another queue where this group turns on and these turn off. So let's select all of these. So I have three queues here. One, two, three. I'm gonna do a 0.2 second fade on them. And then let's see if it could advance. There we go. Perfect. So that's pretty much all three Q applications that I can think of. Um, if you think of another one and you're having trouble setting it up, please leave me a message in the comments. I would love to get to it. So thank you everybody for watching. Happy developing, happy lighting. And um, hope to see some of you around eventually at some point. Thanks, everybody. Take care.